So it gives me enormous pleasure to, uh, to congratulate Trevor Kellen, who's already been down here once, I think. This is a time for celebration and for being justly proud of your achievements. Importantly, this is also a time to thank your parents for supporting you throughout these five or more years and also before that. This is very much their time of celebration as well as yours. They can with great satisfaction see the results of the sacrifices that they've made on your behalf. The medical course is intensive and demanding. It must be in order to ensure that you're fit to take on the responsibilities of being a doctor. We believe that we've prepared you well for this role. Indeed, as I think many of you will know, a recent GMC survey tells us that your predecessors felt the most prepared to be F1 doctors of any medical school in the UK. And we also know that our graduates are the third most successful in obtaining specialty training posts in their careers. This is a great basis on which to embark on your future careers. But I hope that despite, or actually perhaps precisely because of the intensive nature of the course, you found it to be an inspiring experience. And that like me, you found your time as a medical student also to be enormous fun. You will likely have made great friendships that will endure through the rest of your lives. I remember when I qualified, feeling my five years at medical school had been the most fulfilling of my life. But I'm pleased to be able to tell you that the best is yet to come. At the tail end of my career, I can think of no other profession that could have given me such satisfaction. Even when I was exhausted from long hours and lack of sleep as a junior doctor, I always felt blessed to be given the privilege and honour of caring for patients. Our former medical students are giving great credit to both themselves and to this medical school in that years. I ask you to be ambassadors for this school as you make your journeys through your exciting and rewarding careers. We are a young medical school. Without the long history of many others, and our success will be judged by your professionalism. If you enjoyed your time here, and if you felt that we trained you well, then please tell others. 
If you didn't, then please tell us that we might do better in the future. We're keen to hear how you're getting on, so please keep in touch with us to the alumni office. We would very much like uh, to be able to celebrate your successes with you as your career progresses. Apart from caring for patients, one of the other great responsibilities and privileges of being a doctor is to contribute to the training of future generations of doctors. This is an essential and a rewarding experience. May I ask you all to embrace this. Remember the gratitude you felt to the junior and senior doctors who went the extra mile in teaching you, and repay that gratitude by doing the same for your successors. As you embark on your careers, perhaps you will indulge me uh, in allowing me to suggest some pieces of advice, I know you've had others, gleaned from what I've learned during mine. Always listen to your patients, care about them, and retain your humanity. Listen carefully to their symptoms. As doctors, we have a tendency to argue when a patient's symptoms don't fit with the textbooks that they're poor historians. My mentor, Atelier Masri, under my training in cardiology, showed me graphically that in these circumstances, the textbook may actually be wrong. And since then, listening carefully to patients, particularly those who are the outliers, has always been part of my clinical practice and has inspired my clinical research. So learn from your patients. Learn to question dogma. As the politician Thomas Dewar said, minds are like parachutes, they only function, function when open. Listen also to your patients' fears and concerns and try to find out what it is they actually want. They may not be the same as you think they should want. I'd like to read an extract of a letter that I happen, happen to come across in this week's BMA News Review, but I don't put this beautifully. Aha, said the consultant single organologist with a slight half smile and a snigger. So you perform miracles, do you? Forget miracles. I was a registrar in geriatric medicine. I didn't even have any gadgets, no balloons, no gamma scopes. There's not even any scope for scope scopes in geriatric liaison. The older frail patient in question was on the organology board after successful treatment of a flare of her chronic organitis. I was assured by the ward junior doctor that this lady was very deaf and that she lacked capacity because she declined the offer of rehabilitation, but nevertheless insisted on in dreaming of going home. I started my assessment. She was incredibly frail, but she spoke eloquently. She was able to tell me in detail about her small home, and I listened to the names of her daughters and the details of their lives. This was a woman who understood the situation. I soon learned that how the hospital environment had disabled her. Taking her from her home to an alien ward, she was trapped in a bedside armchair, unable to get up. There was no evidence of a rise or recline again, and her trusty four-wheel walker was safely stowed at home. In fact, there, was no, there were no rise or recliners or four-wheel walkers to be found anywhere throughout this vast acute hospital wilderness. This was not a woman who was declining off of help or someone who wanted to disagree with the doctor. Besides, why is it the only question to see the making capacity when someone disagrees with us? This was an insightful woman who seemed to be the only person to recognise that she was close to her, albeit frail, usual self, and that her needs could best be met at home. Listen to and value the multidisciplinary team. The nurses in particular could be a huge support to you as a junior doctor, and they also, as I know, as a senior doctor, will treat everyone you meet, staff, patient, and relatives, with respect, and they will do the same to you. Look, look, and keep looking. In this era of high-tech tests, there's still no substitute for careful clinical observation. As a cardiologist, for example, I'm constantly surprised that doctors forget that heart failure is a clinical syndrome, not an echocardiographic diagnosis. Always give it your best. Your patients deserve no less. And if you don't know what to do or say, always seek advice. There's no shame in not knowing something. But there is shame in putting a patient at risk by being proved too proud to ask. As the US actress Amy Poehler said on an occasion like this recently, even though as a class you are smart, you are still allowed to say I don't know. Just because you're in high demand, you are still allowed to say, let me get back to you. This will come in handy when your parents ask when you plan to move out of their basement, and you answer, I don't know, let me get back to you. <laughs> Learn from your perceived failures. This may turn out to be your greatest inspiration. At a graduation speech at Dartmouth College in 2011, 
the US Canadian Journey of Comedy put it thus. Way back in the 1940s, there was a very, very funny man named Jack Benny. He was a giant star, and easily one of the greatest comedians of his generation. And a much younger man named Johnny Carson wanted very much to be Jack Benny. In some ways, he was. But in many ways, he wasn't. He emulated Jack Benny, but his own quirks and mannerisms, along with a changing medium, pulled him in a different direction. And yet his failure to completely become his hero made him the funniest person of his generation. David Letterman wanted to be Johnny Carson, but was not. And as a result, my generation of comedians wanted to be David Letterman. A non-bizarre. My peers and I have all missed that mark in a thousand different ways. But the point is this. It's our failure to become our perceived ideal that ultimately defines us and makes us unique. It's not easy, but if you accept your misfortune and handle it right, your perceived failure can be a catalyst for profound reinvention. Enjoy your careers. The American teacher David McCulloch Jr. recently stated at a high school graduation speech, climb a mountain not to plant your flag, but to embrace the challenge, enjoy the air, and behold the view. Climb it so you can see the world, not so that the world can see you. On behalf of all of those who taught you over the last five or more years, I wish you long, happy, and successful careers. Remember that your true success will be judged not by the long list of qualifications that you'll no doubt accumulate after all of your name as your career progress but by the skill, dedication, and humanity that you've shown to your patients along the way. Thank you and good luck. many of you tomorrow and a few on, on Wednesday. Thank you very, very much for coming today and thank you for all of those who participated by producing posters or presentations. I'm enormously grateful. If you can spare one minute to complete the feedback form so we can learn from this and do it.